In the last episode, we tried out a bunch of new bosses and tested the limits on our setup. But this time, I want to get back to making actual structured progress. Before the aforementioned structured progress, a declaration. Before the end of this video, I want to get a successful Araxor kill. I think it's going to be borderline impossible to get one with this setup, but we're going to make it work. Let's start off with the Jack of Trades aura for some quick archaeology XP. By the way, I saw some comments wondering why I stopped after 20 skills instead of going all the way to 25, and it's purely for convenience. The first 20 skills are really easy and fast to train, and they're all central to Birthorp. If I went for 25, I'd get more experience from my book, but I'd also have to spend a lot more time on dailies because those last five skills take a lot more time than the first 20. We'll expand upon this later in the video, but I'm not a big fan of dailies in general, so anytime I can cut down on the amount I'm doing, that's always a positive. Five archaeology levels. Not bad for, like, seven minutes of work. One other really good Iron Man activity is Penguin Hide and Seek. You can find penguins all around Gilinor each week for penguin points, and then you can spend those points on an absolutely crazy amount of experience. In terms of XP, this is the best weekly distraction and diversion in the entire game, and if we can complete the penguin quest line, we also get access to additional penguins for even more points each week. And also a polar bear for some reason. Actual size RS guy. All right. I mean, it's definitely this one. Oh my god, it's two penguins! Wait, how did it take me that long to notice? Genuinely, am I cooked to notice that it's actually just two penguins? Oh no, that's actually a low point. Wait, speaking of agility overhauls, why don't we make penguin sliding an agility course? Look at me! Let's go! Why are the penguins absolutely shredded? Penguin agility is kind of insane. See, this actually, unironically, I think would be kind of a fun agility course. I think I could easily do this for 10 hours in a row. Wait, did I just do a front flip? This is the agility rework that we need. Like, genuinely? I don't want you to take offense at what I'm about to say, but you're a bit of a chonky penguin. Bro, that's a compliment. All right, that is the Cold War quest complete. Not a single level up. That is an immensely, irredeemably silly quest. As I'm doing Gethixian caches, I've come to the realization that I absolutely despise them. Twice a day, I've got to spend 10 minutes running around with all the other Iron Men while everybody spams crests and competes for points. It's just not fun at all. But what if I never needed to do caches ever again on this account? See, for the most part, the most important unlock from Divination, and the reason why everybody spams caches, especially in the early game, is to get level 80 for Invention, which is RuneScape's only elite skill that requires 80 in smithing, crafting, and Divination to access. But there's a really interesting method that could actually get me all the way to 80 divination today. And if we can get that done, then I never have to do caches ever again. Let me take you through it. Engrams are memory echoes of the late god Guthix, and there are 12 of them scattered around Gilinor. Unlocking these memories will give us some interesting divination-related buffs, and there's one in particular that I'm interested in, which is called the Sword of Edicts. If we find the memory at the Void Knight's outpost and then play back that memory, we can activate it with flickering energy and memory strands, which are both gained by training divination. And then once activated, this is going to quadruple the divination experience gained from converting divination memories inside of Dungeoneering floors. Oh, and as an added bonus, handing in the engram for that first time also gives a big chunk of XP. What? Wait, that was 30k divination XP for doing the tutorial? Talk to the Echo. It's Guthix. Wait, let's go. We made big guy already? Another 30k XP? Bro, these are, these are crazy. So then sort of edicts, charge it up. And then if we direct the fountain of energy, we should be good to go. Unclick that one, click this one. Confirmed. In order to do the next penguin quest, which gives the ability to spy on a polar bear each week for even more penguin points, I need 45 hunter. So why don't we bang that out really quick at Hetz Oasis. Whirly gigs are great XP and you can do them basically from 30 all the way to level 99. And I think 30 to 45 is gonna take like 40 minutes. So not a huge time commitment here to get us a little bit further down the penguin quest line. This is the Cerberus Slayer task of hunting. Is it really? It's that insane. <laughs> Step one is gather this flower. That is, wait, that was a lot of XP. I'll take 49 construction. Okay, click crocodile. Okay, so I want to click on the normal one and then three gliding ones. Wait, this is really good XP. Bang, that's already a level. Okay, this seems quite quick for like the level bracket that we're in. While I bang out these 1500 levels, a quick message from this video sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN is the fastest VPN in the world, but it's so much more than just a virtual private network. 
One of my favorite NordVPN features is simply to use it to put myself virtually at home whenever I'm traveling and I'm on the go. As someone who lives in Canada, but also has a wife from the United States and who works for a UK-based company, I'm on the go a lot. It's as easy as setting my country to Canada, and then all of a sudden I can access the same websites and shows that I could access when I was back home. And NordVPN also works for a variety of different devices. So whether I'm on a laptop or I'm here on my phone, with the click of a button, it's as easy as connecting myself to NordVPN servers in Canada. And just like that, we're good to go. One other extremely cool feature is NordVPN's dark web monitor, which scans the dark web to look for times that your personal information may have leaked in something like a data breach or a hack. To test out, I added my email address and my wife's email address, and lo and behold, within seconds, I got six different instances where my wife's information had leaked online. For each of these instances, I also got a breakdown of exactly where this information leaked and what information was compromised. So, goes without saying, we've got a couple passwords to change. If you're interested in checking out NordVPN and seeing if it's a good fit for you, head to nordvpn.com forward slash rsguy for a massive discount that includes four months free on a two-year plan. Thank you so much to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. With that said, let's get back into it. That's already level 32. That's another level. That is 3,500. Okay, this is really fast. Wait, so we've done five levels in like a couple minutes, yeah? That's another level. That is level 37 hunter. 38 hunter coming in. That is level 39 hunter. That is level 40 hunter coming in. 41 hunter. 42. 43. 44. That's 45 hunter done. I absolutely love these active fast training methods. Genuinely, some of the best content in RuneScape. I know some people are going to cook me in the comments for this, but I think active skilling is some of the best content in RuneScape, and especially when the XP rates are high, it's just really easy for me to get into the groove, and we got that done in no time. So now, let's get into the quest. Bro, I feel like he's, um... He's like Venom. He's about to like morph. Dude, RuneScape has come a long way in terms of the visuals. All right, let's go do the hunt for the Red Rack Tuber. Holy, that's a huge footprint. Tell me I didn't need level 45 Hunter to spot this footprint. There is no way. Without the level, you just would have thought it was part of the landscape. You would have fooled any soldier who'd merely spent time in the water. I've not merely spent time in it. I've become one with it. Bro, this guy's like Bane, but for penguins. He's Penguin Bane. You nearly adapted to the dark, but with water. Surely a front crawl would be better. That is the hunt for the red rack tuber. Quest complete and 54 thieving. Okay, that was a wild quest. Before I lock myself in Damonheim for the foreseeable future, let's get an Araxor attempt in and just see how far off we are. Araxor is an extremely useful boss because it's the only way we can get six dose Sardomen brews and super restores until someone's level 89 crafting. And if we're lucky, Araxor also drops tier 90 two-handed weapons for all three combat styles, which would be absolutely huge. It's also one of my favorite bosses in the game, and that is definitely a contributing factor for me wanting to know how close we are to being able to do it. Uh, very quickly, I actually don't think this is going to go well at all. 56% hit chance? I'm already webbed. Oh, that's close. That's a one-hit spider! <laughs> Okay, well, I feel like if I had a Chaotic Staff, like, maybe? Okay, we got absolutely blasted, but Pup's down to go back with me and see if we have better luck as a duo. One singular Araxor kill would be pretty nice for Pup to have, because the best place to mine Phasmonite, which is a level 70 mining location, which is where Pup needs to train next, is right outside the Araxor Hive, and the boss portal is a great way to get there. Okay, my hit chance is... I'm taking no damage, though. In the 33 to 35 range? Mine's oh. in the 52. Remember, we've got Devo and stuff, too. This definitely seems better. I'm being informed that I don't have anti-poison. <laughs> Neither do That's I, but I'm not poisoned. We're gonna be, I think. Does it poison you? Maybe it does. Yeah, I would just rotate some defensives. I am now poisoned. <laughs> I need the poison damage to increase, though. Are you poison purging? Thinking about it. I mislicked my terror bird. Oh, we should phase it. Oh. Oh, no, I didn't have it. No, nah, you're good. You're gonna take way more damage if you stand over there. Wait, why? Because I can't, cause I can't run over there. Oh, oh, we gotta get on the on the thing. Yep. Okay, off. Good luck, boys. I see one mirror back over here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna deal with it. Oh, you got eggs. Wait, these minions hurt. We're not ready. We're yeah, not ready for this. Me a thousand. Can you attack? Yeah. Let's go. No. Oh, aggro's me. 
It turned. It turned. Oh god. I can't make it to the thing in time. I'm sorry. You can't, I believe. Oh. oh. <laughs> I Wait, think I got, got walked out. Smoked. I got walked out. Okay, that didn't work at all. I'm still guaranteeing a successful Araxa kill in this video, but let's get back to questing and training divination because I would very much like to never have to do caches ever again, and that's the most important goal in this video. As soon as we've got some of these quests done, we're heading back to Daemonheim. I also want to start working towards Azanadris quest because that unlocks the ability to get Elder Troves, which are these loot boxes that are dropped from all of the Elder Godwares bosses that contain a variety of items, including extreme potions that would otherwise require a Herbler level in the 90s. But instead of getting Herbler all the way up to the 90s, all we have to do is a slightly annoying quest line. And it's not annoying in terms of requirements, it's just some of these quests are absolutely crazy long. So why don't we get started on some of the earlier quests in the line so that as soon as I'm level 58 Archaeology, which is the requirement for Azanadris quest, we've got a bit of a head start. If you could pick a city in Gilnor to release the unchained Raksha into? What city are you picking? Entrana is cruel. Bro, they don't even have weapons over there. Bergdorot, they've been eating too good lately. I did just rebuild Bergdorot. Yeah, we don't want them, we want them to get, get greedy. It would humble them. You know what? I vote Bergdorot. We just finished building them back up. They got a little swag. They got a little confidence. Knock them back down. I just feel like I'm actually helping, you know? That is the Shadow Colossus. Quest complete. It doesn't even give you a quest point, but it was a prerequisite for another quest that we had to do. So, you know, these hours, Ryan thinking about RuneScape more than his wife. I mean, look, group Iron Man happens once in a lifetime. Getting married for the average person happens one and a half times in a lifetime. Ergo, I am prioritizing the right thing. That is the needle skips quest complete. We are not going to do the extra quest bits for extra lamps. Wait, so do I have to do both gangs? I've got to talk. I've got to join two gangs. Dude, that's one more gang than I wanted to join. All right. Sorry, Johnny. Here's Bang. I love that I don't get kicked out of the pub. Like nobody even cares. Everybody's just chilling. Oh my God, he's in the other room. Go back to where you belong. All right, Shield of Rav quest complete. It's got a different trunk. Oh, this guy. Oh yeah, this, this tree's got a crazy trunk. You find a mysterious clue scroll attached to the tree. This quest genuinely, like, I think it scared me when I first did it. Book bearer, your name has appeared on my list. A very exclusive list it is too. A list of one. I have a terrible time keeping it updated. As soon as I add someone to it, they die soon after. I don't like that. Could you say you're on a short list? Okay. Uh, Bro, what is going on here? Oh dear, I hope you don't feel naked without your armor right now. Wait, they killed Deshaun! My goat! The you are it. Quest complete. Nice! My reward for completing this quest is to do a slider puzzle. I already proved during Monkey Madness that I can do a slider puzzle without a guide. We are now at the point where uh, I will be... I Wait, is this how this works? You just... Wait, holy crap. What is going on? I've never used the clue trainer before. Am I doing it right? Or am I doing it wrong? Dude, I feel like I'm hacking the mainframe. Is this how cluers feel? That's it? I feel like I'm in the matrix. That was insane. I might be the goat. A magic compo? Surely yo man wants to pull up with the power shot? 73 hard clues? Bro, we're about to be, we're about to be in a good fiscal place. In my mind, I guess we could I'm interested to try Karapak, but also I feel like we... Or you, like, because you tried it and you... Oh, Ran, I'm watching your stream and there seems to be an issue here. Oh, I was just playing a clip from your VOD. Oh. I owe Yoman an hour, Legos an hour, and Bop an hour. <laughs> Oh god. See, divination in Daemonheim works a little differently from the overworld. For starters, wisps aren't guaranteed, and they can randomly spawn when you open a door and enter a new room. When you click on a wisp, it'll last a set amount of time before it despawns. But these memories are stackable, and they can also be two-ticked, which is a technique where if you click every two game ticks or 1.2 seconds, you'll gather memories faster. Because these memories last an amount of time, and not an amount of memories, two-ticking just means that every time I find wisps, I'm going to be getting more total memories from each, which means I'm also getting more XP from them when I deposit them at the end. Speaking of depositing, at the end of each engineering floor, you just stand at the rift and click once, and your character is gonna deposit every memory that you've gathered. That's literally a cache from one floor? Okay, what's the XP per hour though? This seems kind of really good. Wait, why is it so much? Okay, yeah, this is really fun. Okay, caches are dead. I don't like caches. We don't need to do caches anymore. We can just do this. This is nuts. 
500k an hour? Bang. Decent XP from that, to be honest. That is 63 Dungeoneering coming in. Fremenic looks good, I'll say that. But like, like, brother, I'm standing in Lumbridge. <laughs> the floor looks like a wrinkly old man's head. I love that you look at this and see a wrinkly old man's head. Woo, let's go. That is 69 Divination. Nice. Oh, I remember this quest. I hated it. <laughs> Pup, are you just on one today? It's been well, 20 no, minutes of you just picking various things and then whining about them. <laughs> it's no, I didn't remember. just one thing to the next thing to the next thing. Okay, Pup, I'm about to get a huge XP drop. Okay, Ready? Shall I go show you? It was 15k. That's not even that much. That is level 70 divination coming in. With 70 divination done, let's leave Damonheim and do a couple extra things that are going to make this method even better. The Scroll of Gathering costs 80,000 Dungeoneering tokens, and it gives you an extra 25% experience from all sources in Damonheim. But it doesn't stack additively with the 400% boost I already have. If it stacked additively, instead of getting 400% experience, I'd be getting 425% experience, which is nice, but absolutely not a game changer. It's actually multiplicative, meaning that that already 4x experience is then getting multiplied by 125%, resulting in a pretty wild 500% XP. The best way to get Dungeoneering tokens is Cerberus, which we covered in the last episode. So why don't I go back to Cerberus and get myself some tokens? All right, that is 65k tokens. Odds I get 70 Slayer from this? <laughs> that is level 69 Slayer. I love getting a Slayer level every five minutes. <laughs> uh, that is level 70 Slayer coming in. We could finally hunt the Corbicula Rex and Karasks. Scroll of Gathering. Okay, that's insanely good for what we're currently doing. So I am going to buy that up right now. Now that I'm level 70 Divination, there's one final buff that I can get that now makes this method even better. At 70 Divination, I can get into the Hall of Memories, and if I fill up this crest bot, I'll unlock the ability to activate two engrams at once. The second engram that I'm interested in is the World Gate, which is going to extend the duration of Wisps by 30 seconds. This works on the Overworld and in Daemonheim, so we're going to get more memories and more experience per floor. Okay, that's sick. So let's drop these off. That's a good chunk of XP. All right, let's get out of here, man. All right, I loaded up the engram. I, uh, I'm in caches right now. In what? Caches. <laughs> not caches, Bro, caches. You should not be flaming me for saying Gathaxian. Okay, chat, what works? Gathaxian or caches? While I'm in a dungeoneering floor, I'm also going to attune my Ring of Kinship to become a Gatherer's Ring of Kinship, which is going to give me a chance of extra resources from gathering skills. Divination is a gathering skill, so we're about to pop off and get even more memories every time we find a wisp. That is level 66 dungeoneering coming in. What is your favorite thing about GIM so far? Whether it's like your favorite achievement that you've done, your favorite skill. 56 runecrafting. Why that? Definitely 56 runecrafting. Was that from day one when I was asleep? And you had nope, to get it for the it was from 10 seconds ago. Oh, oh, congratulations. Oh my goodness, wow. One other thing I love about this method beyond the fact that it isn't caches is that the more players you bring, the better it is. This is because every wisp you find lasts a set amount of time and every additional person to click on it extends the timer. And that just means more memories for everybody who's involved. I'm over 800,000 experience an hour and we can actually just do it for like a really long time. This is absolutely obscene. Like we could get 80 divination for invention easily. That's 72 divination coming right up. <laughs> All right, how's the XP on this top? The, oh my God, it's like double. It crossed a million, <laughs> a million XP an hour. And yeah, that is um, a very ethical amount of XP when you stack every single buff on top of each other. Wait, wait, so does this mean we don't have to do caches anymore? Yeah, you don't need to, if, if we do this yes. to 80, yo man, if we grind 80 I Divi tonight, cash. you never have to do a cache again. Dude, I'm I telling you right caches. now, that's why I'm grinding this so hard. Dude, I hate caches. I friggin' hate fun. caches. Yeah, no I think way I'm too. 73 divination. I got a full level just from this one floor. That's nasty. Three ball. <laughs> I am, what are you doing? Oh, you finished but the I, floor. You're a hey, DM. Wait, and oh, there's another key. Oh, I no. have it. You Panic? got the last key? Panic? Okay. Yeah, but I, I ended the floor. I didn't realize. Fine. More than 30 seconds, but less than a minute. Yeah, we got this. We got this. We got this. Go. Oh. <laughs> we have 20 seconds. Oh, where are you, dude? dude? No, but what if this floor could turn into another another a guardian room? room? Oh, Please yeah, no. yeah, probably. Please no. Please no. Uh, Frost dragon. And 
Oh no, it's tier 50 wisps! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh no! Oh, we got scammed. Oh, that sucks. Um, okay, that's that's an L. Frost Dragon, Alter, and the Wisps we need. <laughs> no. All right. Well, you Roger. win some, you lose some. Ready up. We go again. Yeah. Okay. So note to note to self. We I guess we just don't end the floor until we've checked every room. That is 74 divination coming in. This is an insane method. This is this is doing it. That is 75 divination coming in. I got a level. I'm getting a full divination level every floor. That is level 76 divination. Am I having fun? No shot. Fun That's too. how I got 80 constitution. Yay, from, I'm 80 con. from the icy bone. Bob, Bob. What? You're not. <laughs> what? Ready I'm up. not what? Ready up. I just wanted to congratulate my member on a 80 HP. I just love that the, you're a streamer that is not able to both talk and click at the same time. That seems that is a crazy oh combo. Uh, do you want to wait at that difficult. door, man? Wait at the door. I have, we have the key. <laughs> All right. Oh my god. Four gamers dungeoneering. This is crazy. This is a monumentous situation there's a cache in five minutes can we uh we don't need uh, caches anymore <laughs> leave me alone we've got caches at home someone said tell ryan to sleep how cooked are you dude i could literally drive a you. forklift right now no you can't i absolutely that's could. like me saying oh i'm not tired at pedals? all that's uh, 77 divination let's go gamers uh that is level 78 divination coming in not bad at all and we're gonna keep it going wait is 78 the side of life oh <gasps> Wait, that's actually huge. I might not ever have a death forfeit ever again. I got a level. I'm 68 yeah. engineering. All right, this is this is the last one, by the way. And that is level 79 divination. It is currently four o'clock in the morning and I've been online setting up this method and doing it for the last 14 hours. So I think it's bedtime, but let's wake up first thing in the morning and finish it off tomorrow. It is time to get level 80 divination. Let's do it. Let's head back into Daemonheim for the final time in the foreseeable future and get this thing done. Uh, tier 70. Yeah, this is the, the goat wisp. Thank goodness. We actually got what we needed. It's a double tier 70. I'm looking at my XP chart when I swap from the tier 40 to the tier 70. It's so funny. It's just a straight line up. I can taste the balance. And there it is, level 80 divination. And more importantly, I now never have to do caches ever again. Unless I want to, which I don't. That is our first of three skills needed to unlock invention, and most importantly, I had an absolute blast doing that. Dungeoneering Divination might literally be my favorite skilling method in the entire game. I enjoyed pretty much everything about that. Ooh, that is level 69 Dungeoneering too. That's actually nice. sick, but I'm retiring for now. Divine locations are an optional daily activity that you can do with your group. You can make a divine herb patch one with 10 guams and a tiny bit of energy, and then every single person in your group can gather from it and get a full invent of herbs for each one. And you can do this multiple times back to back until you reach your gathering limit. If everybody shows up and you do this with five people, it takes about five minutes, and between the whole group, you end up with like 700 herbs. So it's a really, really good option. This isn't something we do every day, but when we're coordinated and when we've got people online, it's a really solid option, and it's gonna help us a lot later on when when we need some herbs. Um, yo man, I would drop. Ready. Okay, Bob, drop. Ready. Oh, I drop, I drop. Okay, I can drop, I can drop, I can drop. No, me, I go, I go, I go. Okay, I go. okay. <laughs> okay, I go, I go, go, ready, ready, ready. Right, drop, go, go, drop, go, go, drop, go. drop, drop. Bro, if this is the coordination that we need this to go is, to Yakamar this, with, this we're absolutely doomed. I'll yeah, take poison. Cooked. No, no, actually, you take poison. No, I'll take poison. No, Dude, I'll, I'll have both you take know poison. That no, I was like a poison. top razor back in my days. I, was, like, I am going to yeah. come back to this moment when you plank at Yakka <laughs> on the first phase and the first mechanic. Bang. That is 37 archaeology, dude. The fact that we're gonna get up to 40 without doing arc, this goes against like every best practice for an Iron Man, but bang. That is 39 archaeology. I think we're gonna get 40. That is level 40 archaeology. Shout out to Jack of Trades. That is all the levels I need for Daughter of Chaos. Uh, so that is the only archaeology requirement for the dive ability. So we honestly may want to think about doing that quest sooner rather than later. With our massive goal of 80 divination done, let's get back to bossing. We're going back to Hellworth for real this time, because I think it's time that we get into our first real PVM grind. All roads lead to Hellworth, and if I can get the wand of the Cywer Elders, I'm going to be set for a very long time. 
My current best magic weapon is a Vanquish, which is a tier 75 staff. It has tier 75 accuracy and tier 75 damage. But the thing that makes the Elder Wand pretty special is even though it's listed as a tier 85, that doesn't really tell the whole story. The Elder Wand's accuracy is actually tier 90 and its damage is tier 80, which in an instance where I've got 100% accuracy makes it not actually that much better than the Vanquish. But because of how underleveled I am and because I'm missing a lot of upgrades that would give me accuracy, that's a situation that's pretty much never gonna come up. So having that tier 90 accuracy is going to be absolutely massive and it should allow me to stand a chance at some much harder bosses. So that's why the Elder Wand is really important. It's not going to be easy to get, but fortunately, I'm a huge fan of lower level Hellwer, and I'm happy grinding it out as long as I have to. Lycos is also after some raw sharks, so he's going to join me for the first few hours. But for the vast majority of this grind, I'm probably going to be on my own. You know, if only somebody wasn't just dropping the desert souls that I worked so hard to catch on the floor, maybe we'd have more. What do you mean? I I don't know any pup. Do you know of anyone that was doing that? I don't. I feel bad dropping these desert souls because they were difficult to source. Can I get a heart teleport, by the way? Literally, someone took 26 heart teleports out of the group storage. And if it wasn't pup, well, it does not make I have, any sense. Yeah, I don't because have Because pup didn't take them, and pup's the only other one that's gone to the heart. <laughs> I think we need to do a bank investigation of everyone in the GIM <laughs> and see who's been stealing everything. I don't have the mini quest on, I can't even use it. Oh, you, wait. Do you need the mini quest for it? <laughs> Apparently, so that's even Just more do, um, useless. This should actually be really easy, I think. This yeah. is so much faster. I'm already up to 42 kills. <laughs> yep, I'm at 40 as well. This is the best. We should just keep going, honestly. Just get to 80. Yeah, we should, 80, we might as well just get all 200. I'm sunning. I think we want to stand probably under each other for this part so that we can... Oh, you just got death skulls. <laughs> yeah. Base death skulls just clears everything. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm literally going to zero foot this. Let's like, go. Actually. I am too. I am too. Okay, we're doing it. We're actually Hellwarig. Hey, whatever we can do to make sure that you can just pump damage. Yeah, dude, I'm pumping right now. I'm absolutely pumping. I'm, I'm waiting to see you guys get a drop. Any droppers? Uh, I got dwarf feed seeds and charms. Okay, and Legos, you got seals for that too? Yeah. Uh-oh. No, I, uh, I, I did the dumb. We're okay. You're looking a little uh, low on life force over here. Any killers? More dwarf weed seeds. I hate that you go and get herbs now. I know. Getting It used to be like an 80 dwarf weed drop too, and now it's just like a couple dwarf weed seeds. Yeah, this is definitely the best boss option for getting a rep, because it's the easiest boss. Mm -hmm. Vind would be really good for the bones though. Ooh, I got crystal keys. I'm watching Legos That's get good. blasted. We should figure out a death forfeit for today. That's good, yeah. Make the guy who's tanking, you know, figure out a death forfeit. Just yeah, for I, I know. The, just seeing you take that 3k hit made me think that... And also seeing you callously decline to use the sign of life that I spent 14 hours Dude, grinding gotta, for yesterday. I gotta get my undead grimoire so I have some stats. Hello. I just, uh, you know, I just figured maybe we should we should talk about it. I got 48 raw sharks. Any droppers? Ooh, 183 magic logs. <laughs> All right, well, the magic log forfeit has been put to rest. All right, that was a great first trip. IMO. Are you getting a pre-build? Yep. Holy, this guy is a PVMer. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, hat. Disaster kill. Actually erase it from the record books. So what do you think we're gonna get as our first drop? Probably an essence. Okay, I don't think that counts. Separate. That's a separate table. Uh, it'll probably be a wand. A wand I... first would be insane. I have a feeling it's going to be a crest. Oracle eight stone spirits. I actually am pretty happy we're at the point where these stone spirit drops are insanely good. By the way, for those who don't know, stone spirits are really useful on Iron Man because whenever you're mining with a stone spirit, you can then get two ores instead of one. So effectively, if you're gonna be training mining anyway, the value of a stone spirit is equal to that of an ore. And because mining is faster to train than smithing on an Iron Man, they're extremely useful. Getting an extra ore just translates to more smithing XP for me, which is awesome when I'm trying to get to level 80 for invention. Oh? Oh? Do we have an early deather? Nope. Oh my god. <laughs> He's a little low. Nah, I got this. I got this. This is gonna be pure RNG. If it's if if it's on me, we're in a bad spot. I'm just gonna juice. I signed. Oh! Oh, oh no! Oh, okay. That was close. <laughs> the first sign of the series. The first sign of the series belongs to me. That's Hellward kill 50. Dormant Anima Core body. <laughs> 
Let's oh, go! No. Dude, that's gonna be so good in like 70 months. <laughs> actually, actually, that is pretty good now that I think about it. I mean, it is actually someone in the group will be able to use it. That's an actual okay drop, but it is the same drop rate as the wand and the orb and the crest. Dormant anima core bodies, legs, and helms are dropped from each of the four God Wars Dungeon 2 generals. And when combined with the specific crest that is dropped from each boss, they turn into tier 80 melee power gear from Vindicta, tier 80 power range gear from the Twin Furies, and tier 80 power magic gear from Hellwar. So basically, if you combine a crest with a dormant, you end up with a great piece of power gear. After our first Hellwar hour and our first drop, let's get together with the boys and do a singular Calphite Queen kill to unlock the journey tier 5 achievements. It isn't a big unlock this time around, it's literally just a fashion scape upgrade, but when you're one requirement off getting the achievement, done, you go and get the achievement done. Dude, his gear looks so sick. <laughs> I knew he wouldn't have a rope. I freaking knew it. He just, he let out an anguished cry. <laughs> Wait, can I squeeze? I'm squeezing. They call me RS guy, tunnel squeezer. Oh, I can't do Did that one. Actually well, I, they don't yet, but they could. Like, if they wanted to, I, I, I would be... Pup's already poisoned. We're off to a good start. Surely we don't lose to the queen of the Cal fights, right? Wait, we need more rope. Do you what? Have more rope? We need more rope? Oh, no. Dude, we're ropeless. No. I thought you said you brought extra rope. What the... I thought yeah, said, I, I gave it to Big... Too. I gave it to Big Pup. You only brought one extra rope? All right, hang on, 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 hang on. No, hang I brought on, two on, extra rope, on. and I used one hang of them. On, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I got a lower hound. Emergency rope. <laughs> you guys both with your lore out for extra rope. We'll wait for everybody at the entrance though. Oh, never oh, mind. Pup's just Pup's already it. going. Right. Pup is just going in. I have no prayer, so. Oh no. I was, Do you have I food? Was... No. Well, I have a little bit. I have enough. It'll be fine. Okay. Now we're we're four we're four gamers. There's no way. Yeah, we're fine. All right, I'm sunned. Wait, Bow Binded is getting ready to just blast off. I can tell. Wait, I'm hitting like a truck. Holy, see you idiot. Bang. That is the journey tier five mission accomplished. Let's go. I got 140 law runes from that. That's not even half bad. That's not bad at all. We got an I we got an Iron Man armor drip upgrade. I think it's gonna look really cool. It looks nicer. It definitely looks nicer. With the Journey Tier 5 achievements done, let's go over the current plan. Outside of our impending Araxor kill, the one other thing I'm setting up for is unlocking Dive by completing the Succession quest. I've spoken about it in previous episodes, but it's a really, really strong unlock that requires level 60 mining and smithing, which is why I've been training those skills in my AFK time. But it also requires completing Civil War parts 1, 2, and 3, and the Civil War 3 mini quest in particular is farming focused, as it requires getting 250 favor with the Crux Druids. The only way to get this favor is to do Herb runs, so I guess we're starting to do herb runs. The only problem is I don't have a lot of the important unlocks that would make herb runs significantly better. So for starters, why don't I do fairy tale part one and unlock the magic secateurs? These go in the tool belt and are going to give me 10% more herbs for the entire remainder of the account. So it's pretty worth getting before you start herb runs. And just for fun, why don't I see if I can kill Tangle Root without using melee because I'm meant to be magic locked. Ancestor Spirit Aura, it is your time to shine. So I'm gonna pop Ancestor Spirits here. Yo Man, when he did this quest, he found a way. I think he was using Rings of Recoil too, but he found a way to tank out the boss and do it without using melee. I don't care quite as much, but if I'm able to, I'm gonna try. Let's see if I can do it without melee. How much damage do you think the Spirit's gonna do? Bang! Wait, it's sick! I'm winning without using melee. What a boss fight. Wait, did, how many times did he go? See, you idiot! Queen Secateurs without using melee! Shout out to the Ancestor Spirit Aura for making so many of these methods possible. That is Fairy Tale Part 1 quest complete. Most importantly here as a reward, we now have Magic Secateurs. I can add them to my tool belt. And now we're going to get 10% bonus herbage for the remainder of of the account. Sticking to the theme of farming, let's go to the Ghost Ahoy quest for the Ectophile, which is a teleport that's gonna get me nice and close to the Cannabis Herb Patch. Hello, Madame Nettie. Wait, this quest also has Gamba in it. I forgot about that. All right, I need to win four games of Blackjack. Easy. I'm gonna win again. I can tell. Bang! Guy's actually terrible. Ready? He's gonna lose again. I can just tell. Death rune, right there. Oh no, I'm gonna lose. No! We both hit a 21? What? He had a 21! 
Wait, why did he draw? Do not go to Vegas with uh, with Robin Hood. <sighs> it's just such a good look. So the way to do this, by the way, is you can just keep going back and forth between two. That's three signatures. And that'll be 10. The art of the bargain. That is the Ghost Ahoy quest complete. Two quest points, free passage into Port Vesmatis. All right, he has the Ectophile. I think it's time to get into my farming era. And finally, to continue the Canifus theme, let's go back to Araxor and fulfill my promise of a successful kill. I still don't know how we're gonna do it considering how badly it went last time, but wish me luck and let's try to get it done. So two, three is really advantageous because you skip an entire phase of the boss fight, basically. Because the light path counts as if you did 100,000 damage. The only problem is Magic Rax is the hardest of them all. You take the most damage during Magic Rax and it's not even particularly close. It's not going great, to be honest. Idea. Wait, why is Rax hitting me from here? Oh, bro. He's got big legs. I'm in trouble, big pup. Also dive would make this a lot easier too. Okay, well, we don't quite have it. All right, I'll give it one more try. Okay, Vampora seems good actually. I mean, it's already 40K, but screw it, let's go. I mean, Peon's pretty punishing. Well, I'm doing a lot better than last kill. Wait, I'm actually running amazingly right now. <laughs> Wait, I've done a full lap of the room. You're so locked in. I'm bird specking. This is actually working. <laughs> My familiar is too far away to use the scroll. <laughs> oh no. Wait, I'm almost going to last phase and I haven't used food yet. Actually, idea. Why don't we bait out as many acid spiders as we can? They make P3 harder, but P4 easier. There are a total of four of them. I think it's worth a food or two. I haven't used a single food yet. Yeah, look how acidy and dangerous he looks. All right, we're phased. I hate this uh, this cutscene. What would you do for the acid phase? I would. Uh, would you make let sure it bounce or just me? run? Um, uh, I don't know. If you run, Raxes and Rage goes up. If you let it bounce once, it's safer. That was insane. Zero food left. No food, a thousand HP, perfect timing. The wild magic G staff to take him out. And we have squished the spider. But now it's time to get a drop. Here we go. <laughs> That's a tier nine journey achievement. We gotta hit him with the walk up. In three, in two, in one. Bro, <laughs> that is not a good loot. Uh, can we in post, can we add some stuff to that, please? We worked so hard. The brews are good, though. I was so hoping you died. Congrats. Thank you. Attention after a uh, kill. Finally proud to be your teammate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now you killed it. Good job. With that Araxor kill out of the way, now it's time for the recaps. But I'm also going to include a recap for myself, for some of the things that didn't fit very well into the pacing of the video. On the subject of engrams, I checked out the Hunter engram, which is pretty cool, because it lets me gain memory strands when I'm training Hunter, which I can then turn into Signs of the Porter, which is going to transport items that I gather to the bank. I also got a kill at Orakalka, which is one of the Rex Matriarch bosses earlier today. She doesn't drop anything I need at this point, but I wanted to see what it was like. It's a boss you entangle spam and then save spot, so not really a super important piece of content, but it's good to know that if I get a Rex Matriarch's Reaper or something, we've got options. Yoman spent the vast majority of his time doing Dungeoneering Divination with me, and Bunnywop also spent a bunch of hours in Daemonheim, but also spent some time upgrading to tier 50 gear, and I joined her for a giant Wool Reaper assignment where I got to level 90 magic. 
Legos had an absolutely huge questing day where he gained 33 quest points in one sitting. And outside of that, of course, he joined me for about 75 Hellwork kills. And last but not least, Pup went down an absolute Slayer rabbit hole, which is why you didn't see much of him this episode. He did Cerberus until the Slayer level required for Cave Horrors, and then he went and unlocked Cave Horrors by completing a bunch of the pirate quest line. After that, he grinded Cave Horrors until he got a Black Mask, which gave him increased damage and accuracy whenever he was on his Slayer task. And then at that point, he went back, got another Hellhound task, and now he can absolutely cook at the Cerberus boss. So now he's got a great method to gain Slayer experience and Dungeoneering tokens. With the recaps out of the way, I just want to thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe for more awesome RuneScape content. And with that said, I hope everyone's taking care, and I'll see you very soon for the next one.